Hello and welcome to the Healthy Wealthy Wise Show. It's Corey Sievers here, I'm your host. And in this particular session of the show, in Healthy, we're going to be talking about your joint health. In fact, I'll be covering 17 top tips to improve your joint health and flexibility. Lots to share. And so in Wealthy, we'll be talking about discipline. I know you may not like that word discipline, but we're going to be talking about four disciplines that can help you to win in your career and business. And in WISE, we're actually going to be looking at geese and seeing what the, you know, really what the life and the flying habits of a geese of geese can teach us. So seven life lessons from geese. All that and more, your questions answered, etc. here in the Healthy Wealthy Wise Show. So congratulations for joining us here at the Healthy Wealthy Wise Show. Again, if you've just joined, I'm your host, Corey Sievers, and in this particular show, we're all about helping you to reach a higher level of health and lifestyle. That's what we're all about here in the Savvy Team, and obviously, that's why we cover so many different topics here in the Healthy Wealthy Wise Show. So if you are new to what we do here, we're all about helping you reach that higher level of health and lifestyle, as I mentioned, and when you connect in with our community, you'll have access to step-by-step action plans, innovative solutions, and all the guidance and support that you need to reach your wellness goals and really live life to the full. So we have a whole range of wellness programs and action plans and that sort of thing. And really, we're here to inspire you, to motivate, and to guide you. So congratulations for being here on the Healthy Wealthy Wise Show. Great to have you with us. And so if you have any questions, comments, of course, do let us know, Uh, reach out to us, chat with us. We'd love to to hear your thoughts, your comments, your questions, and we'll do the best to answer anything as we go along here on the live show. So so if you um, haven't noticed, we are also launching the Healthy Wealthy Wise show as an audio podcast. So that's now available and we're jumping on back to episode one. And so that's available right now. So again, look out for that if you want to be able to listen on the go and review some of the information. And of course, all of the episodes and episode notes go to our blog at savvy-team.com forward slash HWW. So you can just go there, look on the right hand side under Healthy Wealthy Wise Show or up the top under Healthy Wealthy Wise Show. And you can find all the, the notes and back episodes and all that sort of thing as well. So uh, again, uh, look, We'll be talking about joint health and more here. So if you know anyone that needs to look for advice on helping their general joint mobility, improving joint discomfort, those sorts of things, I think they'll find this information really, really helpful. So let's get underway. So we are talking here about healthy first up, and that's the 17 top tips for healthy, flexible joints. So we're about to jump on into that particular information. Of course, as I said, If you do have any questions, then do let us know. Do uh, chat with us in the comments and please share this if you know know of somebody that needs to know this information. Also, if it's your first time here, consider liking and following us here at the Savvy Team. And uh, if you're joining us on Facebook, you'll want to go up and click on like and follow and maybe see first so that you don't miss us. Uh, and and miss when we we go live as well. So, that being said, congratulations for being here. Let's jump on into the seventeen top tips uh, information. Let me get you ready to go here. All right. So the 17 top tips for healthy, flexible joints, uh, and just a sec, we'll clear that up. Okay, bear with me, everyone. I have lost a couple of um, screens here, so I'm going to sort this out and be back with you. (laughs) Now I think we're good to go.
All right, so yes, if you have just joined us for the Healthy Wealthy Wise show, in Healthy, we're going to be going through the 17 top tips for healthy, flexible joints. Now, if you happen to be suffering with, and it looks like we still have healthy uh, hanging around on the screen there, so let me get rid of that, and we'll try again. All right. <laughs> so thanks for joining us here for the Healthy Wealthy Wise Show. If you have just joined in Healthy, we're going to be dealing with the 17 top tips for healthy, flexible joints. And look, if you've struggled with any aspect of your joint health and uh, you know comfort, then they are sort of like warning signs. And so when we see warning signs on the dashboard of the car, we know that something has to be done. And we don't just smash the warning sign and hope that it all goes away. We actually do something to correct the underlying issues. And joint discomfort is an indicator of some underlying issues. And there are some things that you can do rather than waiting for the degeneration to occur. And that's why we love the quote from Dr. Molly Roberts that your body will start by whispering, then it'll start talking. And if you don't pay attention, it'll start yelling and shouting, but then you have an illness or some form of degeneration. We don't want that to be you. We're all about prevention. We have, you know, our action plans can really help you with, um, you know, issues that you may be struggling with, but it's certainly powerful from a preventative angle. So I'll be going through these 17 top tips, and if you want to delve into some more of the science and the uh, the product suggestions that we use, then I would suggest that you register for our free masterclass uh, for our joint mobility action plan. We also have additional information in our private group, so that's of course available to you as well. So just request an invite into the private Healthy Wealthy Wise group. So all of the things that, that I'm going to be going through, we actually have available on a special report. So if you would like to have a, a like a, a visual, like a downloadable PDF copy of some of the things that I'm going through here, then simply request that report. In fact, you can make a comment uh, here live on Facebook and follow the instructions and we can send that report over to you right now, in fact. so. Uh, but otherwise, if you're listening into this, just message our Facebook page with the word joints and the, um, we'll be able to send it over to you. That will just follow the instructions and we'll send you the 17 top tips for healthier joints free report. But look, definitely, if you want to improve something about your health and your joint mobility, your joint comfort, then we can definitely guide you there no matter what your age, whether you've been struggling with aspects uh, you know, related to your joints from from injury or simply more. You know, the more mature years, then there are certainly some solutions that we can uh, that we can really help you to deal with. So, and these are real solutions too, not like they're de depicted in this funny particular photo here, uh, where this it's a cartoon here by Randy Glasberg and saying your X-ray showed a broken rib, but we fixed it with Photoshop and. <laughs> It's, you know, that's funny from a cartoon point of view, but a lot of, we really believe that a lot of the things that people are doing with relationship to their bones and their joints and everything are really just, you know, they're, they're just superficial. They're just dealing with the issues, the, the symptoms, uh, sort of like fixing it with Photoshop. So these are real solutions. So let's get underway with the first top tip. And that is to move, okay? That is to actually move, learn to move. A lot of the times when joint discomfort gets you down, you tend to not want to move. And that's the worst thing you can do. Exercise is a must, not a detriment. And so movement and stretching are really beneficial. And the more you move, the less stiffness you're actually going to have. So if you tend to be sedentary, uh, you know, for example, then take breaks from your desk or your chair and move around. So a helpful tip here, if you are simply reading, working, watching TV or whatever, do change positions often. It really does help to keep the, the joints lubricated and helps to, you know, to, to keep that stiffness away. In actual fact, they, they're really starting to say that almost the sedentary lifestyle is, that we have nowadays is almost like the new modern day smoking in terms of its effect on our body. So we need to get up and move more often. Tip number two is to lose some weight. If your joints are hurting, 
lose a few kilos and you'll take the strain off your hips, knees and back because excess weight certainly adds to the load that's placed on your joints and can increase the risk of cartilage breakdown. What we've also seen here in the Savvy Team is many of the dietary habits that lead to weight gain are also the inflammatory habits that can lead to joint discomfort. So clearing up those things can really make a huge difference in the short and the long term. And so talk to us about our Savvy Weight Management Systems. We have a number of programs to help you to find your best uh, really body weight. Tip number three is to nourish your joints and your body. And so just like all aspects of your body need nourishing, your joints are no different. So the joints, you know, your joint health is, is really related to your overall body health. And so there are 90 nutrients that we talk about that are needed for optimal all-around well-being. And that's the same thing when we talk about uh, the joint health. So made up of minerals and vitamins, antioxidants, amino acids, essential fatty acids. So your joints need the same healthy raw materials that the rest of your body does. And so, you know, if you've struggled with perhaps split ends and unhealthy skin and broken nails and all those sorts of things. Well, they're all indicators as well that your, you know, your general body is deficient in many micronutrients because, you know, your, your joint cartilage, your, your bones, your tendons are made up of the same essential raw materials as all of that with your skin and your nails and, you know, your hair and all that sort of thing. So, Again, unhealthy hair and nails, they're all warning signs that there's an underlying deficiency going on in the body. So we need to supplement in most cases. And a lot of people, when they think about healthy joints and bones, they think of calcium. And calcium is not the only nutrient that's important for joints and bones. In fact, there are many much more important nutrients such as magnesium and copper and manganese and zinc, boron, these are all important for the actual utilization of calcium in the body. Boron, for example, is required to activate certain hormones, including estrogen and vitamin D. So, so again, we have more information in, in other talks and uh, in, in our other action plans and also in the, in the special report. So getting some trace minerals daily, getting some healthy sunshine and, and vitamin D, really, really important as well. Tip number four is to strengthen your muscles. Okay, strengthen your muscles. If you strengthen muscles around your joints, the stronger, you know, the stronger uh, ability for your muscles to hold the joint in place, to really sort of, um, you know, to keep the integrity in place there, it just means that the stronger the muscles are, the less stress you have on joints. And also the more balanced your muscles are. So in other words, you know, for example, not having some muscles that are overdeveloped and other muscles that are weak, that can put pressure on certain joints. So research, for example, shows that having weak thigh muscles increases your risk of knee osteoarthritis, just as one example here. So very, you know, really, really important to to be able to move around, strengthen your muscles and and don't avoid the pain by or any, any discomfort by simply not moving you need to stretch and work into that. And, and you know, maybe in this case, you may need to seek help from a, a qualified person to help you with them um, overcoming some of your issues. But, um, but again, a lot of the time it's self-care that can be done too. So number five, tip number five is to go low and that's low impact. Low impact exercise is the best joint choice for, for healthier joints. And so when we're dealing with with that, it's things like walking and bike riding and swimming and yes, weight training. So I'm not saying that you don't want any weight bearing exercise because weight bearing is very important for your for your bone density and for your muscle mass and all of these sorts of things and for your growth hormone. Uh, all sorts of things can be improved by weight bearing types of exercise and weight training, etc. But, 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 you know, the thing is here, if you have joint pain and or degeneration, of course, you're going to want to speak with your doctor before getting started. But what we're dealing with here when we're talking about low impact 
is the high impact pounding, jarring exercise can increase your risk of joint injuries and may slowly you know, cause further damage to your sensitive cartilage. And this is one of the, the biggest issues with running. A lot of people take up jogging, um, even triathlons and marathon running in the, their older years. And this can actually, some running, running actually isn't all that it's cracked up to be. Uh, uh, for Greg Brooks, for example, a London-based personal trainer, he says that um, he says that really lots of people start running to lose weight and it doesn't always work. In fact, running can increase your risk of cellulite, cause heart attacks and even strain your joints. So it's probably time to, to stop jogging. And it's the repetitive nature of the movements that is the issue. It's just transmitted to your joints, uh, repetitive, you know, repetitive, that repetitive motion to your joints over time can really cause issues. So, and you know, if you've followed any of our information here, even in our fat loss maximizer toolbox here in the Savvy Team, you'll know that we're big fans of things like high intensity interval training and weight training, that sort of thing, rather than the typical jogging and all of that sort of thing. And so if you're thinking about um, exercise here and one helpful tip is to start a weight training program and if you think, well, I have no time for weight training, then read Doug McGuff's book, Body by Science. And uh, in the, the, um, the underscore of this book is really <laughs> getting the best shape of your life in 12 minutes or less a week. And he promotes a particular type of exercise which is very high intensity and slow movements and uh, and so a lot of the, the original development of these type of movements was actually to help the more elderly to you know rejuvenate their body because the the movements were done on machines they were slow and steady and just a constant um, tension time under tension was recorded. So you can actually improve your health and fitness and your whole biomarkers and aging biomarkers in leaps and bounds by starting a weight training program and even just a short amount of time, but intense amount of time each week. So tip number six is to keep hydrated. So water helps to lubricate the joints and uh, Dr. Batman Galige, author of you know, how to deal with back pain and rheumatoid joint pain and your body's many cries for water and uh, many different books on the power of drinking more water. He says the joint discomfort is simply a signal of water shortage in that joint. And so the use of painkillers does not cure the problem, but exposes the person to further damage from the pain medication. So Dr. Batman Galige says that an intake of water and small amounts of healthy salt a part of the solution. And so he also says that the tragedy out there is not recognizing that arthritis and low back pain are simply signs of dehydration in the joint cavities. And so treating the pain with painkillers, manipulation, acupuncture, and eventually perhaps surgery, for example, in time will produce the osteoarthritis when the cartilage cells in the joints have eventually died. It will then produce deformities of the spine. It will produce crippling deformities of the limbs, according to Dr. Batman Khalid. So pretty simple solution there. We can drink a lot more water. Tip number seven, oil your joints. We lubricate it, get more water, and we need to oil your joints. And we know that in terms of, for example, a CV joint here pictured uh, from a car. And, uh, you know, we almost like our joints are a bit like that. They need lubrication. And so essential fatty acids help to reduce joint inflammation and may actually help to protect existing cartilage. So essential fatty acids help to block the action of cytokines, these inflammatory cytokines, as well as other enzymes, which can slowly erode cartilage and they actually help to lubricate your joints as well. So that's why we recommend supplementation with krill oil and fish oils, for example. And so animal-based omega-3 is the richest in the fatty acids, EPA and DHA. So eicosapentaenoic acid and docosahexaenoic acid. And so, uh, you know, unfortunately, yes, if you're vegan or whatever, there are 
omega-3s available from things like chia and flaxseed uh, oil and everything, but the body converts them in a pretty inefficient way. So you do miss out on a lot of the inherent anti-inflammatory benefits of krill oil and fish oil, as well as the neuroprotective and cognitive enhancing benefits of krill oils and fish oils. We're still fans of extracts of things like chia and uh, evening primrose and uh, cranberry seeds and uh, flax seeds, for example, because of the antioxidant nutrition that comes along uh, with the oils. But certainly for the DHA and EPA, krill and fish oils are definitely more powerful. In fact, in studies with krill oil, it was shown to have a dramatic impact after just 30 days with a reduction in inflammation, a reduction in pain, a reduction in stiffness, an improvement in, you know, in the whole functional movement of the joint. So a reduction in functional impairment. So, you know, this is a clinical trial showing that supplementation with krill oil has an impact on improving your all-round joint comfort. Okay, so again, that doesn't happen with the with the seed oils. Let me just lubricate here a bit. Um, follow Dr. Batman Galija's advice. Get some water. So tip number eight is to give grains in particular of the flick. Grains are very inflammatory foods and chronic inflammation is linked to a myriad of different degenerative modern diseases, including arthritis, allergies, asthma, cardiovascular disease, bone loss, emotional imbalances as well, and even cancer. So due to their inflammatory nature, grains, yes, even whole grains, healthy whole grains, as they say, they're linked to joint pain and arthritis. And so once you've dropped the grains, you'll then, and this is not just gluten-free, this is grains, okay? And so, uh, you know, if you're suffering from joint issues then uh, and inflammatory conditions, then dropping the grains is the first thing to do. Then you might want to look further to things such as lectins that can be found in different foods, such as even legumes and and those sorts of things. And then you might even go to the next level and eliminate nightshade vegetables, such as the you know eggplants and potatoes and tomatoes. Uh, many times we see people who have not had results on our programs uh, for joint mobility, like for example, utilizing things such as krill oil and collagen enhancing supplements. Many times people who are not getting the results that we expect when we go through their diet, they're simply eating too many inflammatory foods and that's sparking up the issues. So, you know, it's interesting. People say, well, I, I tried this and I tried that and I, I'm not getting the sort of results that I'd hoped. And that's because, the you know, any technology, any product technology can't overcome a richly inflammatory diet. So again, what we have to do is we have to remove the culprits of the inflammation and then soothe and calm down the inflammation with uh, with nutrition. So give grains the flick. And so helpful tip here is to download our free Eat Savvy Diet for a cheat sheet of the less inflammatory food choices. And on our Healthy Wealthy Wise blog, we have 12 tips to help you get started with the Eat Savvy Diet. Tip number nine is to alkalize. Alkalize your system. Long-term acid body chemistry can lead to gout, joint discomfort, and many other health complications. And so using alkalizing nutrition can make such a huge difference. And you can tailor your diet to include more alkalizing foods. And following the Eat Savvy Diet will already start to nudge you towards are reducing your overall inflammation in your body, but then you can supplement with green superfoods and other uh, and other superfoods and and nutrition that can help to reduce uh, inflammation and specifically gout. Found this some um, great image here from back in 1799, uh, depicting the pain of you know the pain of gout as being like a demon or a dragon biting into the foot. And anyone who's suffered from gout knows that it can be very painful. And yet, it's actually quite simple to get on top of 
but it does mean dietary change. It does mean supplementation. It does mean a change in lifestyle because it's ultimately a lifestyle mediated disease. All right. So tip number 10 is to keep good posture. Protect your joints with good posture. Stand and sit up straight. Okay. It helps to protect your joints and you know your whole functional integrity right from your head down all the way down to your feet. So one way to improve your posture is by walking. Okay, sometimes it's hard to maintain a good posture just standing, but walking is very good. And the faster you walk, the harder your muscles will tend to keep you upright. Swimming can also improve your posture. Okay. Tip number 11 is to up your antioxidant intake. These help to fight free radical damage and to and specifically damage to the joints as well and reduce inflammation. A lot of antioxidants also are very anti-inflammatory. So take just, for example, resveratrol. It's clinically proven to help with gout, for example. And so in many of our, not here in the Australian New Zealand region, but in many of the overseas regions we work with, just one of our particular uh, nutritional blends for collagen enhancement has enough resveratrol in there to really help with gout. And so we get great results for, with people uh, with um, improvement in gout just with even that particular supplement. But again, we can help you clean up your diet. We can help with specific things to remove the acids from the body and, and, and help you with the pain of gout. But OPCs, vitamin C, all of these can assist in not only uh, improving your all-round free radical protection ability, but they can also assist with strengthening collagen and cartilage. Okay, so vitamin C and antioxidants can help with collagen synthesis, in fact. So, you know, take an antioxidant blend daily. Things such as grapeseed extract, pine bark, OPCs, these are very good for the joints and the all-round tissues of your body. Number 12 is to spice it up. Okay, so certain spices like turmeric, cinnamon, parsley, ginger and garlic are very anti-inflammatory and have antioxidant properties as well. So turmeric or turmeric, for example, contains an inflammation fighting antioxidant compound known as curcumin. And so whether or not you love your curries, taking curcumin enhanced antioxidant blends really does help with, um, with the whole reduction of inflammation and has proven benefits all around for the body. Certainly you can have more curries and you can, you can take turmeric or turmeric every day. Uh, it's just, I'm saying turmeric or turmeric because the terms are interchangeably used. Theoretically, it said turmeric, but many people will call it turmeric. And, uh, and so, you know, really you can take that every day, but uh, the body again, doesn't absorb it all that well. So if you're going to take turmeric, then maybe have it with a bit of black pepper, have it with some fat and that will help its up the uptake of the actual underlying ingredient that we want, and that's the the um, the compound of curcumin. And so we recommend that people take an antioxidant daily that has the extract of curcumin already there. And so you're going to get a lot more than you're going to get um, just you know just in one tablet. You'll get a lot more curcumin than you will in a whole bunch of doses of you know turmeric lattes, for example. <laughs> Not that that's not a good idea to have them, but you get what I'm talking about here. So tip number 13 is to loosen up, loosen up a bit. So tight or contracted muscles, you know, really, really cause some issue here. They cannot, they, they can't adequately protect the joint from the daily stresses. And so it can cause damage by pulling it out of alignment, forcing your joint to bear weight more unevenly, causing damage to the cartilage in certain places, and then that leads to inflammation, and then that inflammation leads to joint damage over time, for example. So changing your body posture, placing um, increasing loads on multiple joints is, is, is a good idea. So, you know, for example, if your hips are out and you tend to be putting pressure on one leg, for example, then that can cause issues in that area, etc. So sometimes body work uh, um, people and chiropractors and all that sort of thing can really help if that's your issue. M massage, uh, all, all these sorts of things can help you to loosen up. But chances are you're probably not even doing just enough stretching and things that you can do each and every day yourself to help you to loosen up. So uh, 
Certainly a good tip there. So stretching, yoga, uh, massage, foam rolling, just foam rolling and massaging your own soft tissue uh, can really, really help. So, so can magnesium rich foods and supplements. The green superfoods and, and additional minerals can really help you with your, with, um, you know, with your whole tight muscles. Okie doke. Tip number 14 is to specifically jump on in there and strengthen the cartilage. In recent years, science has uncovered some very specific natural sources of collagen that can mirror the actual composition of the human articular cartilage, so the composition of our joints. And combining this particular source with patented processes of bio-optimization for best absorption by the body, has led to really unique and innovative solutions that can stimulate the body's collagen synthesis in the joints and actually provide you with not only fast results in joint lubrication, but also improved comfort. And you know this has been shown in clinical trials. So what we've seen is the innovative solutions here that we use actually mirror the natural joint composition. And this is a key reason why the body accepts it so readily. So it's part of this particular technology that we use is part of our joint mobility action plan. So certainly ask us about this um, today, if this is an issue to you or somebody that you know. And the great thing is that there are two things that we're dealing with here to do with joint comfort. And that's the lubrication within the joint. So the synovial fluid, and that's, you know, that's rich in hyaluronic acid and it's, the, it's actually the synovial fluid and the nutrition in the fluid that nourishes and feeds and sort of like um, uh, helps keep the cartilage healthy. So if your joint dries out because you're not nutritional, because you're nutritionally depleted, you haven't been having essential fatty acids, you haven't been getting enough collagen enhancing factors over your lifetime, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera then the joint can dry out, that can lead to wear and tear. And so what we need to do is both nourish the synovial fluid and also hopefully help to, um, to trigger uh, a, more of a, an improvement in the collagen synthesis. The great thing is with this science that 89% of people experience improvement in joint comfort. So most people do receive a benefit in the short and long term. So that's after three months. So pretty staggering. I mean, medication doesn't usually achieve that level of efficacy. And that's just trying to relieve pain. Uh, and so with no hope for any improvement. So again, if you know anyone that's struggling with joint comfort issues, then certainly touch base with us. Tip number 15 is to fix your gut. Leaky gut syndrome is implicated in dozens of bodily issues, including joint discomfort. So healing a leaky gut with improving your diet and along with nutritional supplements can really help to control issues such as insomnia, foggy thinking, bad breath, as well as a wide range of diseases. That includes asthma, eczema, and yes, even joint discomfort and arthritis. We have seen when people focus on a gut healing and detox program, that the, the, the joint discomfort starts to go away. And so you can sort of see that when we start to put together a program that then nourishes the joint and you know gets rid of the inflammatory actions and all that sort of thing, then boom, you start to really uh, feel better about yourself, feel more able to function in your day-to-day -day actions as well. So so quality aloe vera, bovine colostrum, probiotic supplements, these can all help to soothe and heal your gut. Uh, but also, you know, as we mentioned before, it, eliminating some of the irritants like wheat and dairy. So basically download the free Eat Savvy Diet, follow that, and you'll be really, really um, heading in the right direction as far as improving your joint health. Number 16, tip number 16 is to go natural with your pain relievers. So... Look to use things such as ice for joint pain and 
heat for muscular pain, okay? So ice is a natural pain reliever. It, it does help to numb the pain. It helps to relieve the swelling. And then you can use natural anti-inflammatory and healing creams and, and, and other anti-inflammatory herbs as well to reduce the, you know, reduce the discomfort. So natural anti-inflammatory creams can contain things such as willow bark, arnica, peppermint, capsaicin, wild yam even, and essential oils. These can re really, really help with the, um, the symptoms and without any of the side effects of some of the pharmaceutical creams. So try to go natural if you can with, your, with pain relievers and things that help with inflammation before you reach for the medic medicated types of things that you know don't really help over the long term and sort of develop a bit of reliance. Your body develops a bit of a reliance on that. So we can help you in this particular area too. Tip number 17 is to give your immune system a bit of loving. Our immune system really is what protects us. And sometimes the signals can go awry. And our system, sort of our, our overall body system, misreads the signals coming from our immune system. So our defenses, for example, may not recognize that it's just our body at work and it begins attacking our cells. And this leads to autoimmune diseases. And it's a bit of a misnomer that, that for example, people say, um, or, or are led to believe that if they have an autoimmune disease, their body, their immune system is so strong, it's attacking the body. It's, your, your immune system is attacking itself. And so the, the common practice is an immunosuppressant drug. Well, our, our, our way of referencing this more is that your immune system is confused. And what we need to do is we need to sort of re-educate, modulate the immune system. We need to improve the, you know, the faults, the, 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 the blurred signals, the crossed wires. And, uh, and so a lot of the times that is simply because your diet and your lifestyle is so pro-inflammatory that the immune system comes in and just tries to clean up all the damage and starts to attack the natural cells. So again, follow the eat savvy diet. Look for, uh, I'll give you some, in, some ideas right now. Check for hidden infections. So yeast, viruses, bacteria, and parasite infections can trigger the immune system. And then it sort of goes on a bit of a, <laughs> a, a bit of a excess run, shall we say. So check for hidden food allergens as well. So wheat and dairy. You can check for heavy metal toxicity and blocked detoxification pathways. This all can trigger the immune system. And you can fix your gut. So leaky gut is another problem uh, linked to autoimmune conditions. You can get the daily 90 nutrients that we suggest, and that makes a huge difference with your immune system. Then there are immune modulators for people with really depleted immune systems, such as medicinal mushrooms and colostrum, for example. So medicinal mushrooms being, for example, the reishi mushroom and the cordyceps mushrooms, these are often used for energy and endurance enhancing properties, but they're also great for all round immunity. So if you want a simple way to find out some of these things that could be affecting your overall um, body and really impacting your biology, then talk to us about our bioinfluence analysis hair test. This really looks to show you what the, you know, through a simple hair test, it shows you the negative bioinfluences and the positive ones and really gives you a balance and the systems in your, shows you the systems in your body that are currently under the most load from your lifestyle. And from that, it can give you direct uh, action steps to work on over the coming few months. And along with our um, suggestions and working with us with the free information that we have, then it can really help you to get on top of things very, very quickly. So there you have it. There are the 17 top tips for healthy, flexible joints. And again, if you want a whole bunch of information about the specifics, then I would really encourage you to check out our Joint Mobility Action Plan. In fact, if you're just ready to say, look, I need some help, uh, what can I do? Then follow our Joint Mobility Action Plan. And so probably one of the quickest ways to get started is to request an invitation into our Healthy, Wealthy, Wise group. And that's where we can show you some of the information, tag you to some specifics and help you get on the path. So we'd love to know how, how can we help? 
We actually have an online survey that you can fill out that helps us to know what particular things that you're struggling with and that way can, we can point you in the right direction. So of course, related to everything I've said here, related to your joint health and mobility and general all-round health, all of the information reflects my personal research and experience and uh, is for educational purposes only. So please don't see it as medical advice. All of the information that I've been sharing is general in nature. And so all of your health concerns have not been taken into account. So any of my comments or what I've shared from my experience should not be interpreted as therapeutic claims. So if you have any question as to the appropriateness of the information with regards to your own health, please do discuss this with your healthcare provider. That being said, we do encourage you to take self-responsibility for your own well-being and to learn more on this topic and complementary medicine in general. And so if you're looking at this particular information, then we commend you for really taking responsibility and being somebody who actually looks to, you know, to take on self-responsibility. And so that's been the 17 top tips for healthy, flexible joints. So again, congratulations for being with us here and getting through the 17 top tips for the healthy, flexible joints. I'm just checking to see what whether there's anything uh, in the comments that, that I might be able to answer for you, but all looks good at present. So again, so that's wrapping up healthy. If you do want to know about any of those sorts of things, please do just ask and again, uh, fill out perhaps our how can we help form and that'll really help to it's a survey that gives us an idea about what's most uh, troubling you and then we can sort of point you in the right direction but certainly if joint health and all of that is an issue uh, for you then uh, we'd love to be able to, to help you and the joint mobility action plan is the most specific so we do have a free masterclass on that so again just ask for that and we can point you in the right uh, the right direction and those who are members of our community our private wellness community already then you have additional information inside the private website too so if you're new here though of course just reach out we'd be glad to help let's jump on in to the topic that we're going to cover here in wealthy so it's time for the wealthy part of the healthy wealthy wise show and what are we covering we're actually talking about four disciplines that will make you win. Four disciplines that will make you win. Are you ready? Are you ready for the four disciplines that can make you win? All right. Let's go. So these four disciplines, the four disciplines that can make you win, what are they all about? What's it all about? I guess, well, the, the question here up front is, does your career or business, you know, whatever you do is your day job, or even if you have a side hustle and that sort of thing, does it sometimes feel like things are on top of you, that you're overwhelmed, that you're caught in a whirlwind, there's so much going on all around you, whether it be the ringing phone, the unexpected appointment, the stuff that's piling up on your desk, all of these sorts of things. Urgent matters, often the urgent keeps popping up, and all of the important things, the projects, the ideas, the strategies that you've thought of to grow your business, your cash flow, your side hustle, or whatever, they can often get pushed aside and not dealt with. And that's a problem. So we do have a tendency to deal with the urgent, the things that are, you know, the, the alarms that are going off in our face rather than simply the, the things that are, are going to take us to the next level. And, uh, and so, you know, that's where what we call the four disciplines of execution can really, really come in handy here. So, And so with the four disciplines of execution, you can rest assured that you're implementing a proven method that has been put in place for many organizations to achieve their goals and move forward in exciting ways. So the four disciplines of execution is actually from the Franklin Covey organization. And here 
Here is what these four disciplines, the four disciplines that will make you win are the four disciplines of execution. And this is a great book. It's, you know, even though it's a business related book and it, it's not really heavy and you can get it on audio book. So if you're more of a listener, then I would highly encourage it. But it's a simple proven formula for reaching the goals that you want to reach as a business or an individual. Here are what these four disciplines are. Focus on a wildly important goal. And I'll talk about that more in a moment. Act on the lead measures. Number three, keep a compelling scoreboard. And number four, create a cadence of accountability. Simple. Simple, right? <laughs> Easier said than done. And that's why Gary Vaynerchuk uh, said it's easy to dream about it, but it's much harder to execute it. So, you know, you may have already experienced that. You have these desires. You want to do something. You set your goals and all that sort of thing. Well, it's easy to come up with the ideas, but it's much harder to actually get the job done. And that's what the four disciplines of execution is all about. And so what the Franklin Covey organization uh, found is that a good idea without execution is worthless. And a lot of organizations and people, individuals, whatever, people can be busy all week, but feel like they didn't get anywhere. They were just busy doing the business and not moving ahead, spinning your wheels, so to speak, to use a, a car analogy. And so they call that the whirlwind, where everything just seems urgent. And and they found this out from, from surveying 200,000 different business leaders. So. You know, this is an impressive right across the board uh, study of the things that that, you know, that stop people and how to get it moving again. So that's what this is all about. So if the whirlwind's got you down and you're not moving ahead the way that you would like to in your business endeavor, in your career, in your life, then the four disciplines of execution could be just what you need. So discipline number one, remember what that was? Focus on a wildly important goal. And the Franklin Covey organization calls that your wig. Okay, so, and so when we look at this, the, so they suggest that you do the minimum to maintain the urgent and less important tasks. And so, you know, again, are, are there things that are just absolute need to be done? Of course, we need to still do them, but we also need to put aside time and they suggest that you schedule it in your calendar to actually work on things that will move you forward and you really protect that time. So, so you really want to, as they suggest, they focus on this wildly important goal. And so, um, you know, if, it's, if everything remained constant in your business and life, right now, what one achievement would make everything else seem like nothing? Like what would be the wildly important change in your life? So if it's from a life, you might say, well, I'd like to generate extra money into my household. That is a wildly important thing. Okay, well, great. How do we focus on that and stop it being, stop the time that you would focus on getting that job done from being chewed up by all of the rest of your life? That's one thing. If you're already executing in a business, then it might be growth in a new project or a new endeavor or a new department of your business that the execution isn't happening because the whirlwind is gobbling up every last bit of time uh, for executing on that idea. Now, they suggest that you, that you put it down. We talked previously on a previous Healthy Wealthy Wise show about setting a smart goal, a time-bound goal. Well, they suggest with your wildly important goal, that you say it like this, from X to Y by when, or from X to Y by Z. So I will increase my income from this much to this much by this date. Okay, so that's an example of that. So a great analogy here of what we mean by, you know, what they mean by wildly important. So if we look at an air traffic controller, okay, looking at all of the planes that are flying around, and if you ever, you know, when you're flying on a plane, it's just like, oh, no, no drama. But if you're entering the busy airspace, there's a lot going on. And so for you, the most wildly important is the plane that you're on. But from an air traffic controller point of view, 
Every single plane is important. But the one that's coming into land is the wildly important one, right? So it's, again, getting focused on that one and not being distracted by other things and everything. And this is what your wig is, your wildly important goal too. So what's the one thing that would make a major difference in your life right now? And so also, what if you're already executing in a business or you're already in, engaged in some, uh, in, in some strategy, what one thing in that, in that particular business endeavor or career or whatever, what will move you to the next level? What are you not executing upon? Okay, and so how can you get very clear on that? So that's discipline number one. Discipline number two is to act on the lead measures. Now, I articulated this a little bit in a previous Healthy Wealthy Wise show uh, where we talked about the cash flow chassis. This is where you know we've got to act on the things that lead to our success because nobody we can't we can't just say I want more money. We have to do the things that would lead to that. You can't just say I want a better job. You have to do the things that would lead to getting a better job. You can't just say I want to lose weight. You have to do the things that will lead to losing weight. You can't just say I want to be healthy. You have to do the things that lead to. They're the lead measures, the things that lead to the success. And the reason they're called lead measures is because that which is measured improves. So we should focus on the things that lead us to success and measure our execution upon them. So measure the lead behaviors, okay? So, so for example, if we, uh, they differentiate in, in the Franklin Covey organization, the 40X book, between a lag measure. So, so I wanna make more money by the end of the financial year, okay? So great, that's a lag measure. You won't know whether you hit that until the end of the financial year. And so, and so the, you know, what can you do now? What can you focus on now? And everybody then goes, well, monthly income. Well, that's great. But what will lead to an increase in monthly income? And a great example that they shared in the book was a water, uh, a water plant, a water bottling plant, I think it was. And they wanted to increase their overall annual turnover. And so they brought all of the team together and and came up with idea, trying to come up with ideas. And they said, right, what one thing would make a huge difference? And they said, well, we want to improve our annual production. So what should we focus on? What should we focus on? Let's focus on our monthly production. And they said, no, that's not a lead measure. Okay. Well, what can we, we, what about our weekly production? No, that's not it either. And so it's it's not just breaking down there. It's not chunking the goal. It's what activity, what do we execute upon that would then lead to that? And what they realized is that they had a lot of the shifts in the water plant and the bottling plant where there weren't full shifts. There were people that didn't turn up to work or were sick or whatever. So the plant operated at less than it could. And so their lead measure was, you know, all hands on deck, fully staffed shifts. What do we need to do to get fully staffed shifts? And by them focusing on getting fully staffed shifts, the lead measure, they hit their lag goal. So for you in a, in a business, if you're in, a, you know, a social media related business, content creation, uh, you know, home-based business, what sales type of business, uh, you know, direct sales or whatever, often what we're dealing with here is what are the lead measures? The, pretty much the lead measures are content produced, pieces of content out there in the world through social media or whatever, or it's conversation started, right? If you're in sales and marketing, all that sort of thing, it's either content out or conversation started. So they're two lead measures. How many unique pieces of content did I get out there into the world for people to find me using attraction marketing? And how many direct conversations did I start today with new people that trigger more of a direct response uh, marketing effort? They're two, two great examples. Right? They, they're two things that you can measure. So they're the lead measures, okay? So, uh, you know, daily sales calls and follow-up emails leads to improve uh, the lag result of uh, re improved revenue, etc. Getting out more articles, 
on a blog, for example, leads to more subscribers, etc. So that's the thing. And it's the same thing with weight loss. <laughs> you know, I want to lose weight. Well, great. What do we need to track? We might track, help, encourage you to keep a food diary, track how many steps you take, track how much water you're drinking. They're the lead measures that lead to the end result. So that's discipline number two, measure the lead behaviors and focus on the lead measures. Discipline number three is to put up a scoreboard, create a compelling scoreboard. Now, this is easier said than done. But what the Franklin Covey organization discovered is that, is that people play differently when they're keeping score. So even looking at a sports team or even looking at even kids playing on a, a, you know, a, a team when they're first learning sport. Suddenly, when there's a goal and suddenly when there's a scoreboard and everything and they can see which team is actually winning, the game changes. So do you know whether you're achieving? Do you know whether you're moving forward? Are you measuring that? Because you're going to play differently if you know whether you're succeeding or not, okay? So... The scoreboard, the, the Franklin Covey organization in four, the four disciplines of execution suggest, you know, for teams that are working together or businesses or, or shifts that are working together to actually have something that's visible for everybody to go for. And then it's measuring those lead measure behaviors and working at it as a collective. Okay, so it might be increase the monthly sales revenue from $6,000 to $12,000 by December the 31 is the wig. And so what we're going to look at is that the lag is how many sales you make, but the lead measure is the number of calls, the number of conversations, as I said, content or conversations. So right now, if you're in, for example, a direct sales, sales type of endeavor, social media type of marketing or whatever, then how many pieces of unique content are you getting out there? Facebook stories, Instagram stories, posts, IGTV, YouTube, blog post, email, all that sort of thing. What, how many unique pieces of content, content are you delivering out there? And how many conversations are you starting? So, you know, a conversation on, uh, in the DM on Instagram, a conversation on Twitter, a conversation in an email, a conversation on a phone, a conversation in Messenger, how many conversations have you started? They're great, two great lead measures, for example. So, and how do you keep score, right? Discipline number four is schedule weekly accountability talks. So create a cadence of accountability is the discipline. So have the weekly accountability talks. So this is where, especially if you're working as a team, you're wanting to you make verbal commitments with the people around you and act like a mastermind so that you can work together to help each other execute and break through roadblocks, okay? So you, it's, it really is also a lesson in honoring your word and protecting your reputation as well. So, so it's, it really is simple as getting together with people and saying, all right, so this is what I said I would do, this is what I did, and this is what I'm gonna do next week. So this is what I said I would do, I didn't match up to that, so I'm going to do this to make up for it and I'm going to do this next week. Simple. Or to be willing to ask for help. This is what I said I would do. I was blocked on these particular issues and so if anyone can help me break through on that, I'd really appreciate that and this is what I intend to do this next week. And so then you might be asking for help and someone would say, I'm happy to help you break through on that because I've experienced in that. I think, great. Let's talk. So this week, let's set up a meeting so that we can um, we can work together on breaking through on that. That's that's it. A cadence of accountability, working as a team, and really you know really working as a mastermind. Those who act alone. Robert Kiyosaki said that networks are powerful forms of leverage. So Robert Kiyosaki, financial guru, author of Rich Dad Poor Dad, Cash Flow Quadrant, all of those all those books on finance and everything. He said that networks are powerful forms of leverage in a particular book, and Retire Young, Retire Rich, I think it was. And he said that people who act alone or as individuals limit their chances for economic success. He says that business is a team sport. 
And yet so many people play like, you know, they're a loner and not understanding. They might watch team sports. They might love watching the football and understanding it's a team sport. They might love watching the cricket or the netball or whatever else, but, or, but, they, but they operate like a singles tennis match. Like they're at, they're it, and uh, you know, and so it's 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 interesting that business is a team sport, according to Robert Kiyosaki, and certainly that's what the Franklin Covey organization found. So there you have it. They're the four disciplines that can really to really help you win. And uh, very interesting uh, book to to read and to hear all of the different stories. So I I really hope that that helps you and do what you can to execute on just those ideas. So what are you being stopped doing right now? What one thing would make a major difference in your life if you just executed upon it? And so think of Gary Vee's um, uh, words there that it's easy to dream it, but it's much harder to execute it. So you need a strategy to help you get that done. And so this could help you. So let's jump on into the wise side of things. And so we're going to be talking about geese in wise. Yes, yes, we're going to be talking about geese. Who'd have thought that we'll be talking about geese? So we're going to be dealing right now with the seven life lessons that we can learn from geese. Seven life lessons that we can learn from geese. Now, this has actually been an article on our Healthy Wealthy Wise blog for some time. And so I wanted to delve into it and really speak to you about these particular things. And it sort of leads, leads on from the wealthy part of things about working as a team, about execution and all that sort of thing. And I think you'll find it very, very valuable. So, so you have just joined. We're talking here about wise in the Healthy Wealthy Wise show and the seven life lessons we can learn from geese. But before I go through these lessons that, that as I mentioned, have been on our blog for a number of years, I just thought I'd play a short video for you and uh, that'll introduce you to the whole concept of geese. So let's take a look at that particular video. So we're going to be talking about seven life lessons that we can learn from the geese. And certainly it's interesting when we think about the fact that the old saying or idiom that's intended to mean don't be a fool or don't be mindless is don't be such a goose. And so it sort of almost 
makes it sound like geese aren't very intelligent. And whilst it's true that geese operate a lot on instinct rather than mindfulness and intellect itself, they're certainly not foolish in their actions. In fact, they do some pretty smart things. And that's where these seven life lessons come from. So I hope you'll find these lessons valuable. Number one is to share a common goal and direction. I think you got that from that short clip that I just shared. So as each goose flaps its wings, it creates uplift. So, uh, you know, so it creates extra aerodynamics there that reduces air friction for the birds that are behind. So by flying in the V formation, the whole flock achieves a 70% greater flying range than if each bird flew alone. So not only is, is it an easier path by flying together as a flock in a V formation, easier for each individual bird, but they can go so much further by doing that as well. So share a common direction and goal, work as a team. So there's certainly the lesson that we can learn here is that people who share a common direction and goal you know, are certainly going to go further and benefit from the momentum of the group around them. So make sure your team and your, or your organization, whatever group that you're working with is aligned towards a common goal. It's going to be easier, better for the team. It's going to be more productive and efficient for you as an individual, as part of the team. So share a common direction and goal. Number two, lesson number two is to stay in formation. Stay in formation. Whenever a goose falls out of the formation, suddenly that individual goose feels the drag and the resistance of trying to go it alone. And so then it quickly, it works harder. It does a bit of a sprint to catch up and rejoin the flock and take advantage of the power of the flock. So how are you operating in the teamwork that you might be involved in? Are you making the extra effort to catch up to the flock and fly in formation so that it's more efficient and easier for you? Or are you out on your lonesome feeling the drag of trying to go it alone? So, you know, re a really important lessons here. Flying in a V formation also improves the flock's overall visibility, as in with, with the V formation, the geese can see what's going on around and, and sort of work collectively. And from a marketing point of view, if you think about it, we, we, we see, we're amazed by the V formation and by the cooperative way that they fly. And so there's not just visibility for the flock being able to see around them uh, because of all the different perspectives. But from a marketing perspective, I see that this flying in formation shows the team, it demonstrates the teamwork, and that in and of itself has a tremendous impact on being seen in the marketplace. So whatever team that you're working with or whatever, if you fly in formation, you work as a team, it actually improves your own individual visibility, your ability to survive, your, your ability to take advantage of the opportunities, and your ability to be seen by the world around you. Tremendous impact by staying in formation. So it also relates to those of you working in an organization, for example, this is about visibility within an organization. So top down visibility enables leaders to stay connected with what's going on in the organization, out on the fringes and the edges, and that allows them to make better informed decisions. And if you have bottom up visibility where you're sharing the visions and missions of your organization, then that enables your team members to see the bigger picture and it sort of empowers them to better align themselves with the team's overall objectives as well. So really, if we have as much sense as the geese, we're going to stay in formation, we're going to join those heading in the direction that we want to go, uh, and we're going to use that sense of community and willingness to work together to not only make our own journey more efficient, but to make the visibility, our success, the success of everybody uh, better and more efficient. So lesson number three is to have the humility to seek help. So as I mentioned before, that when, when, a, when a, one of the geese falls out of formation, it suddenly feels the friction of going it alone, of trying to fly alone. So it, it's the one that quickly adjusts its mistake and moves back into the formation to take advantage of the lifting power 
of the of the team of the of the flock really so the 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 lesson that we can learn here is to sort of be humble and admit when we stray off track in the challenges that we face and you know certainly the things that i've seen as somebody who's worked within teams and run teams and everything is that often the un, unlike a goose <laughs> many people when they start to feel the friction, they actually distance themselves. And the the feeling of being distant to the team actually produces more friction. They don't feel better about themselves. They don't actually feel more empowered and everything. And so and so they feel bad and wrong and then distance again. That's an example. When the goose disappears from the flock, it feels the drag of trying to go it alone. So, so you know, again, whatever you're doing, if you're working within an organization, work together, find ways of strategic alliances. If you're working in, in as an individual self-employed person, form strategic alliances, mastermind groups, and begin to learn to fly in formation. If you're in an established organization where there's already uh, support structures in place, don't try to go it alone. Use the support structure, the V formation that's already there. You'll move faster You'll find, and you'll find the journey easier, as we can learn from the goose. So <laughs> lesson number four is encourage the leader and empower others to lead too. So it's interesting that when the lead goose gets a bit tired, because obviously the goose at the head of the V formation is copping the drag. They're copping it all. They're not experiencing the lift of the whole organization. So when that goose that's the leader gets tired, what it does is it rotates back into the formation to allow another goose to take the leadership position, to cop the drag, so to speak. And the geese honk from behind to encourage the leadership to keep going, keep going, forge your head. You can do it. You can do it. We like what you're doing. We're there. We're behind you. So that, I mean, that's powerful when you really think about it. So the, the, the lead goose gets the acknowledgement from behind um, from the honking. So, um, you know, really keep going. Keep up the speed. We're there for you. So the lesson here is that, is that you know, honk, you know, <laughs> encourage your leadership whatever sort of organization you're involved in. And also share leadership. So, you know, the, when, when, the lead, when the lead goose gets tired, it comes back into formation. Someone else comes up to spearhead the, the movement forward. Now, in an organization, that doesn't mean that suddenly someone's the leader, but there's always tasks. There's always endeavors. There's always objectives. There's always projects. There's always maneuvers and things to do. And any, the leader of any organization is always looking for good people to spearhead a project and to take the, you know, to be the lead goose there and to cop the drag, to spearhead that. And so, you know, encourage those people. If you're in an organization, encourage those people who take that lead in the V formation and forge ahead and everything. Be there to honk. Um, and of course, if you're a, a, a goose in formation, then make sure you're encouraging with your words and empowering the the leader. And so, you know, there's a there's there's a number of different lessons here. So if you're in a management role, empower your geese to <laughs> to to lead. And if you're in more of a, you know, you're you're not the leader, you're working within an organization or team, honk, but also show your your um, demonstrate your willingness to take on projects and and show your strengths demonstrate to the to the uh, to the leader of the the organization that you're ready you're ready to take on a leadership role so lots of other things to, to learn that we can we can really get from that particular thing but encourage the leader and empower others to to lead as well so number five is to recognize and support each other. So as I mentioned there, the geese honk to encourage those up front to, to keep up their speed. So the lesson, the, the, the general lesson that we can have here is to make sure that we praise people and give them the recognition that they deserve. 
in organizations, teams everywhere, all across the world, the lack of recognition in employment situations. It's the lack of recognition that's one of the main reasons that many team members, employees, etc., are unsatisfied in their work and, and sometimes why they quit, want to go it alone. Sometimes why people want to quit a, a, a job and start their own business. It's just a lack of appreciation. But what they don't realize is that they're copping the headwind now. Uh, and they didn't realize what it really took to run a, a business. So it's very, it is very common for people's efforts as part of a team to go unnoticed by their peers uh, in a fast moving environment. So it's understandable, but that's where, you know, it's really good to have things in place to, 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 to work as a team, to create idea generation, to brainstorm, to mastermind, and then to acknowledge people when that idea is executed upon. So consistently find ways of providing recognition and encouragement towards each other. It's just vital to keep the team alive and to keep that, you know, to keep you flying those long distances. Keep on honking. All right, so uh, number six is stand by your flock in good times and bad. So when a goose gets sick or wounded, then two geese drop out of formation and follow it down to help and protect it. So they stay with it until it either dies or is able to fly again. They then launch out with, you know, they launch out together with another formation or they catch up to the flock. So they catch up, they work hard to get to the flock. So they put in the extra effort to catch up with the flock so that they can then rest and fly in formation and work together as a team. So the lesson here is to stand by each other in difficult times, okay? It's easy to, it's always easy to be part of the team when it's all winning and sometimes things are going bad, but every business, every business, every team, every organization goes through momentum and ebbs and flows. So, you know, I've talked before in different segments about the seasons. You know, just like in the, the seasons in our weather, summer, autumn, winter, spring, or depending on where you are, fall. Uh, so, you know, depending on where you are in the world, obviously the seasons can be more extreme or, or not. So, so, you know, we don't, in the extreme areas, I've often used the example in extreme areas, for example, farming, they might, you know, have farming in the, in the spring, they might be planting and growing in the summer it's 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 really nourishing and and seeing the growth and then in the fall or the autumn there's definitely the harvesting and then it's the end of the season and the cold winter sets in that's not when you sell the farm because there's nothing that you can do it's that's when the restorative work goes on but everything follows cycles business follows cycles life follows cycles and so if you're in the summer of your life well where things are hot you're heading you, you know, you're heading for the autumn. <laughs> and so if you're in the winter of your life and things aren't good, things are tough, it's okay. You're heading for the spring. You're heading for the spring. Okay. Everything follows cycles. And so the biggest challenge is for many humans, not the geese, is that they look to the other um, areas and other organizations or other businesses or whatever where things are hot and they're just experiencing summer. And nothing lasts forever. No company goes through momentum forever. No organization goes through forever. No team, no business, no nothing goes through momentum forever. There are cycles in everything. So stand by your flock in good times and bad and really work together in that V formation. But, but certainly, you know, this is where teamwork. So if someone's struggling, certainly we look at the, the aspect of the geese. Two geese will fall out of formation to look after the, the struggling goose and get them back. But then they all have to fly that distance to catch up. Everyone has to get there. So, you know, you can't be carried, the goose can't be carried, but there's the support there. This is this principle of self-responsibility. But look, if we have the sense of a goose, we're gonna stand by each other when times get rough. Lesson number seven is to stay committed to the team and the core values and purpose. So, you know, when we when we when we think about these migration uh, patterns of geese, they don't really vary that much. Okay, so flock members can change, 
uh, over time and everything. But the young learn from their parents and the other flock members the the the, the route to follow, and, and you know they they often then in springtime go back to the spot that they were born. So when you think about it, they're following established patterns. They're following established paths. They're following what the, the, the strategies that have worked for those that have gone before them. So the lesson here really is to stay true to our core values. So any team has values. It has core values. It has goals. It has methods of being. It has, you know, certain missions and visions. So strategies, tactics, ways that we execute, products, services, all these sorts of things change as any organization, business team remains agile and moves with the flow of what's going on in the, in the world. But great teams stick together and stick to their core purpose and value. They persevere. They preserve these core values with all of their might, really. So if we drop back and when we drop back, if we have the sense of a goose, we're going to recover, we're going to you know, we're going to regroup, but we're going to resume that formation and, you know, and really get back on track in the in the direction that we want to go. And we're going to stick to the plan until we succeed. So, you know, the old saying is that the geese fly south for the winter because the, we're dealing with northern hemisphere cold uh, and, and everything there. So for us in the southern hemisphere, they're not flying south for the winter. Um, but, you know, that whole thing is that they're, 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 they don't give up on their destination just because the going gets tough because it's survival there. So it's different. It might, we might say it's different for a goose, but here often in our world, there's so, there's so many things that we can sort of fall back on that we don't make that commitment to our own goals, let alone the core values of a team. So the encouragement here is to stay committed to your goal, stay committed to the core values of a team and just never give up. Just keep keep at it. So there you have it. The next time you see if you happen to be lucky enough to be in a situation where you can see these geese fly in formation, you can think about these seven lessons from geese. And so certainly it's not something that um, that I've personally seen. Maybe you know, maybe some of you let us know if you if you're in in this particular region or some other region around the world, and you have seen this whole process. And we hope that those seven life lessons from geese can really um, can really make a difference for you. Let us know. Let us know your thoughts. We'd love to hear it. So as we're bringing in the Healthy, Wealthy, Wise show for a close in, uh, in, in this particular organization, we really believe, you know, since we're so passionate about helping people reach the next level of health and lifestyle, for your best wellness journey, you need a plan, you need some solutions, you need guidance, and you need community. And if, if the seven life lessons from, a, from the geese have taught you anything, it's certainly the power of community. So wherever you're wanting to go, whether it be something about your health and lifestyle, uh, then we can certainly guide you there. So I would encourage you to fill out our How Can We Help form and, uh, and you know, just let us know what you're looking to, um, to achieve. But thanks for joining us for the Healthy Wealthy Wise show. So great to have you with us here. And so love to hear your thoughts. Love to hear what you found the, the most valuable. Uh, let, us, let us know. So it's Corey Sievers here with the Healthy Wealthy Wise show, encouraging you to be savvy. Until we meet again, uh, all the best and... Uh, I can't say I can't say don't be a goose because that's not right. So remember the geese and uh, and look if we can help you in any way, let's fly in formation. Let's do this together. So all the best. We'll catch you again next time.